Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. We're from Wikibon. We're here live with theCUBE at MIT. We're at the MIT Information Quality Symposium. Uh, this is really where practitioners get together and try to figure out, okay, we have all this data. It's sprawled all over our organization. Our systems are siloed. How do we put forth some kind of data architecture, data governance? How do we develop an information quality strategy? Uh, and how do we evolve that over time? We're learning very quickly that it is a journey. It is not a project with a beginning and an end. It's something that evolves, it's organic, it lives with your organization. And Dat Tran is here. He's the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Data Governance and Analysis at the Department of Veterans Affairs. And we're going to unpack a lot of this, uh, the, the information here and the, and the issues that we just discussed. Dat, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Really appreciate you, you taking Dave. the time here to Thank you. spend with us. And um, well, you told a funny story that, uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, we really apologize for this in Boston. We couldn't get a hotel room. Our crew was, you know, 20 miles away. <laughs> you you got offered a hotel room in uh, in New Hampshire and decided, well, I'd be better off staying at the airport and pulling an all nighter and working and maybe taking a cat nap. So, how do you feel? <laughs> I, I'm I'm feeling great when it comes to data and governance and business intelligence. I'm all like wrap up and, and uh, I can keep going for days. Well, as a person so. who flies a lot of red eyes, I can tell you, <laughs> you're on adrenaline right now. By three o'clock, you want to be near a bed. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. So anyway, the VA, you, you said in your, you gave a great keynote today, You're the, you said the VA is the, the, the second largest agency behind the, the DOD, not a lot of people know that, and you're, you're managing a lot of data. Talk a little bit about the VA and your role there. Okay, um, VA, like, uh, like you said, Dave, we, we are the second largest uh, federal agency, cabinet level um, agency in the, the, the government, US government. Uh, we, we have uh, multiple business line, we, we we basically like a, a conglomerate. If you look at us as a private sector, we have eight different business lines ranging from healthcare to home loan um, to uh, education service and memorial service. Uh, big data is, is, is not something that is new to us. Uh, we have been around for uh, since 1930 up until now. And over the years, we have built uh, many systems and we have many different business lines that have different requirements for data. So big data have not been uh, you know, a new thing to us, but what we are really looking at trying to shift to toward VA is to create a customer-centric data environment, and that is the, uh, the effort that's currently going on in VA uh, that require us to govern data from uh, people, process, and the technology standpoint. Uh, and that also will impact how we do business intelligence and also how we improve our information quality. I, I stole your line, Dad, in my opening. It was big data, big deal. You yeah. guys have a lot of data, 11 petabytes, more than 11 petabytes, I believe. Yes, right? yes. Okay, and so the other thing uh, that I really liked about your, your keynote, it's very transparent. A lot of executives get up, oh yes, we have this data architecture, everything's integrated, it's all wonderful, and then when you really peel the onion, you find out it's not so integrated. You have a lot of systems. Like you said, you've been around since 1930. You've been developing systems in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, different computing architectures. And so right. you've got literally hundreds, if not thousands, of, of applications and, and systems, yes. all with different data sources. Challenging environment. Please describe that environment for our, our audience a bit. We, we in the VA um, have a very um, uh, large uh, information infrastructure and system that, uh, like I said earlier, we have eight different business lines and some of the system have been built uh, since the 70s and the 80s and many of our system um, from across the business line don't interface or uh, interoperate, interoperate with each other. So one of the things that we're trying to achieve through VA is this, we are looking at data from a little bit different perspective. Rather than looking at data from a business uh, system, uh, from a business line or system perspective, we are approaching the data from a customer perspective. So currently we have a major effort undergoing um, in VA starting this year, where we are looking at shifting from um, a, a fragmented information environment uh, to work toward it, what we call a customer data integration effort, where we will be able to have a, a 360 degree view of the customer and once we get that information in an integrated fashion, the rest of the information that related to, to, to the customer, we will be able to see who used VA for what benefits and services and understand a lot more about their uh, behavior in terms of you know, uh, their usage of, uh, of uh, various VA business and um, services. So you said in your keynote, you're not alone. You talked to a lot of CIOs and, and other you know, leaders in commercial enterprise that 
have the same problem because as, as a consumer, we can all relate to this. You call up, you know, for instance, your financial institution one day and, and they transfer you somewhere else and they don't have the information at their fingertip and that's a common challenge. Right. So um, you talk about this whole customer data integration. Do you see this as a situation where all your systems are actually going to be over time able to share the same customer data, that true 360 degree view? And how long will it actually take to, to get to that vision? And, and uh, that, that's a very good question. It is a long-term vision that's what we're trying to get to VA. One of the things that we're looking at from a customer data integration standpoint is that we need to get the core common customer data, the identity information, uh, of course, in order for them to use VA, uh, they have to, uh, to be a veteran or they have to tie to a veteran or a service member. Um, so, so if we get the core information correct, that's the way we look at it, to build that, that core piece correctly, what we call the centerpiece, then we can then link the rest of the information across the, the, the enterprise to that core piece. So for example, what we envision is down the road um, in, the, um, uh, in the next couple of years, we will have a, a authoritative customer, common customer data. That then information on healthcare, home loan, education benefits, and so on can be linked to that core common data so that at any time, any place, anywhere, that if we would like to know uh, how many veterans use in certain VA benefits or services, we will be able to retrieve the same information from the same authoritative source. Excellent, so um, I want to come back to that and, and sort of how you applied that, but uh, my colleague Jeff Kelly is going to jump in here. He's our lead big data analyst, follows a lot of the technologies that, that we're talking about, but came from the, the, the so-called traditional world. So Jeff, you know, why, don't you, why don't you take it from here? Sure, so Zach, one of the things that struck me in your uh, keynote was you talked about the data silos that you've got in your organization, and uh, having covering this world for many years, that's a problem we've been struggling with for quite a while. Um, I wonder if you could delve a little bit more into some of the, um, not just the technology, but the people and process issues related to breaking down those silos. Okay. Um, because, you, you know, ha again, having covered this, a lot of the issues revolve around who owns the data, and, and people get very um, attached to their data sources, right. sometimes don't want to share them, yep. um, can lead to, you know, meetings half the time being spent arguing over who has the right numbers. How do you ad address not just the technology but the people and process issues uh, related to breaking down those silos? Yeah. Uh, the, the number one thing when we look at how to approach this customer data integration, rather than looking at it from a data and system perspective, we look at it from a business process perspective. So we're looking at what is the mission of the department, we're looking at what, what it is that we're trying to deliver in terms of business and services, and we work backward from there and identify where do we need to capture the data to support each step of the business processes across VA? And by doing that, we can quickly find out where we have multiple sources of authoritative data that we need to integrate and consolidate, but also at the same time, because it is business driven, we know what data um, is critical to the business process and what data is basically just um, uh, not necessarily non-value added, but not uh, critical to the mission, so we can decide the priority of how we approach the integration aspect. The other thing that we look at is that in order to change the mindset of a multifaceted organization, is you, the, the number one thing that must be changed is the culture. And that's the most difficult part, but, with the, but, but rather than deal with it from a Indivi from an individual organization perspective, the way we look at it is we bring up the value proposition of what is in it for our clients if we have a customer data integration environment. So when you start talking about, you know, what is in it for the veterans and the family and the service member, that is where, you know, folks really understand that what we need to do to support the client is more important than anything that have to do with our individual organization. And that's the reason why we approach it from a business process standpoint, but also from a what is in it for the veterans and the family member at the end of the day. Now you showed a little insert, a uh, little, little picture in a picture on your slides of the business process map, and you yes. can't really read it because, you know, it's obviously the VA's business process map is, is quite complex, I'm yes. sure. How did you actually document that? It, did it, it didn't just fall out of the sky. I mean, you. Oh. You presumably had to really think through the business processes, the interdependencies, how you actually you know, organize that taxonomy. Yes. How did you go about that? What, what we basically did was um, we approached it from 
you know, the business process by reaching out directly to the folks who really understand the benefits and service delivery that we need to do in VA. Uh, like I said during, you know, my, my, my speech today, that when we look at business people, there are business people with data background, business people with IT background, and then there are the business people who truly understand the business processes. So what we did was we have a team that create a standard interview template where we reach out to over 100 subject matter expert across VA business line and we document every single business process and then we go back and reach out to the subject matter expert that understand the data in the business process and capture the metadata that are beneath the data that are, are being used to support the business process and we look at it from, from, from the standpoint of uh, in the business process, you have the actors, and then you have the, the, the process step themselves. So we identify who is doing the work or who is responsible for that business process. And in some case, the actor could be the veteran who might be required to provide some information to VA. And so we identify the actors, and then we identify the processes and the information system, and then we link them all together with the metadata supporting the, the, the business process that are, you know, um, are being used across VA. So you, you essentially created a business process map and connected that to a, a data flow. Yes. And so you can now see where the data flows throughout the organization, what business Correct. processes are affected by that data, where there's redundant data and potential areas of, of risk or, or, yes. or error. And then what's the next step? How do you act on that information? Okay. Um, what we do is when we're looking at the business process, at the same time, we have a group of SMEs that start looking at what is the future vision for VA to be an integrated service delivery uh, and benefit delivery organization to our veterans. And so from that future vision, then we were able to identify from the business process standpoint where we have the overlaps, but where we also have gaps of information that we might currently not capture that we require the veterans to go out and seek. So, so using the future vision of where we need to be and the current business process, identify the overlap and the gap, what we are ultimately going to be able to do is to reduce or eliminate the overlaps and utilize the resources that are being used today to create all of these silo overlap and address how the gap will be filled in terms of data and information. And you're talking about the overlaps in data. Now, yes. what, about, what about the business process transformation? Th is that something that you, I mean, obviously it's not your primary role, but does that come out of an exercise like this? Actually, it's a natural fit for, uh, for something like that to come out of this effort of customer data integration. One of the things we learned that when it comes to customer data integration, it is only a symptom. The problem and the root cause is actually the business process and business integration that we need to transform, uh, to, to apply and transform the department toward a more integrated business approach. So coming out of this CDI effort, what we are going to see is that we will address not only about the data piece, we will also address about the process, um, the governance and the data management piece in terms of you know, the roles and responsibility and the people, the culture, and the process. And all of this are being put together in what we call an integrated roadmap on how to achieve a veteran-centric or um, a data environment. So I wonder if we could take that to its kind of logical conclusion. Ultimately, you're trying to improve services for veterans. Yes. So maybe could you kind of put some context around how are the improvements you're trying to achieve with CDI and a really customer-centric view, mm -hmm. how is that going to translate to supporting the veterans uh, and the various services you supply in a yeah. better way? What will their experience look like uh, when you've maybe five years from now and we're further down this road versus what it looks like today? Okay. Um, our clients are basically coming out of the military. So that information is currently captured by the Department of Defense. In order for you to become a veteran, you have to serve in the military. So we, we ultimately, we will know ahead of time before someone potentially will become our client. So the way we envision it is that someday when we get, uh, when we have a CDI, a customer data integration environment in place, is that we will reduce the burden on the veterans or his or her family 
to have to come up with proof of service, to have to come up with you know what we call demographic and, and contact and, and military service history and come to VA and apply for benefits or services. That when we have a customer data integration environment, it will enable us to have that information early and upfront that will allow us to proactively um, uh, provide benefits or service or at least will reduce the burden on the veteran to have to come up with that information themselves and provide it, you know, their proof of service when they come to VA, number one. Number two, uh, our vision is that someday when we have the CDI environment in place, we will enable self-service where veterans can come and retrieve uh, his or her information on his or her benefits usage in VA uh, and be able to um, access that information or will be able to update his or her uh, personal information or contact information, you know, uh, online. Uh, today, we are not quite there yet, but what we're seeing is the reducing of the burden and also it will help improve the business process um, uh, long term that will enable us to be able to more efficiently and effectively deliver benefits and service mm -hmm. in a yeah. short period of time frame. You had some great one-liners in your, in your discussion today. One I love was don't try to kick in the door in one shot. You might, you might break your foot. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about you know, communication and, and management buy-in. You can't do what, what you do and take on such a large initiative without making some mistakes. What would you do differently if you had to do it all over again? And what advice would you give your fellow practitioners? The biggest lesson that we have learned is that it's not always about technology. The people factor is the hardest to change. And the people factor involved not just folks that are in senior position, but in order for us to really transform VA, we have to be able to pull ourselves together as a one VA approach, and that's including from the senior leadership all the way down to the folks who are doing the work out at the, in the trench. And so one of the things that we push for is to help shape the culture and change the culture by messaging. Uh, one of the most important things that we have learned is strategic communication. Oftentimes we take it for granted that we communicate after we come up with a solution or we communicate after we already come up with an idea or a plan. Uh, one of the things that we learned that have been very effective for us is we communicate early and often in the process. At the end of the day, all the, although we are data folks and we might not be used to it, but at the end of the day, marketing is very important. And when I say marketing, that's in line with what we call strategic communication. Have an idea, you have to have the value proposition, and you have to be able to communicate that at all level from all different perspectives so that the technical folks would understand it, the business folks would understand it, what I'd like to call the pedestrian term. If you can communicate your idea and what you're trying to do in pedestrian term, when anyone who look at the business plan or the operating plan and say, got it, that is right on target, and that is success. Now that's great advice, and, and certainly we deal with a lot of IT folks, and, and IT folks by their very nature are not marketing folks, right? Yes. So they tend to not communicate early and often. Uh, and, and so I think the advice really applies throughout the organization, I especially in those roles where you're not used to going out and promoting you know, right. your, yourself. So uh, fantastic. Well, Dad, I really appreciate you, you, co you coming here today and being here at the, the MIT Information Quality Symposium. Uh, it was really a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Jeff. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We're going to be right back with Michael Nix, who is uh, the Director of Analytics at Fletcher Allen Healthcare. This is theCUBE. I'm Dave Vellante here with Jeff Kelly. You can tweet me. I'm at D Vellante. He's at Jeffrey F. Kelly. Keep it right there. This is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE. We'll be right back.